brother. God said he loves you and only you. Because you... Let's read it again. As, as for the other people. Read it from the top. Verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So, if Adam is the Lord of all thy creatures, read. Of him come we all. So everybody come from Adam. Read. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So God's chosen people also come from Adam. Watch this. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Read. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. Read. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. So he said, everybody come from Adam and the chosen people. And then he comes back and says, the other people that come from Adam, God has said they are nothing. So now we gotta find out who the chosen people are. Give me Isaiah 44 and 1. Let's see who the chosen people are. This is very important that we gotta learn. Because we have been taught an error. We've been taught that God loves everybody. But God don't love everybody. Come on. Isaiah 44 and 1. What was? No, when you said you, I thought you meant singular, just me. You meant me as my family, my, my people, my people, my ancestors, yes. my lineage. Yes, sir. Okay, I Read thought that. you meant me only. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 1. Uh -huh. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. So Israel is that chosen people. And the nation of Israel, as you can see on this sign, are the blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. The sons and daughters of the slave trade, those that were colonialized and marginalized, that's at the bottom of society right now with their oppressive foot on their neck till this day. Those are the people that God loves. And you might, you might say, if that's the people that God loves, why are we at the bottom? Hebrews 12 and 6. I don't need a whole bunch of speculation on that. <laughs> hey, hey. You can skip that one. I don't need the Bible for that one. I know why. What you got? Let's see if it line up. Non-biblical. Let's just go with the last 200 years of our history in this country. Okay. The Constitution says I'm only one sixtieth of a person to be counted as sixty of a person. Also in the Constitution it says, even though there's nothing about slavery until the 13th Amendment when they abolished it, they said they can import me as property and they're guaranteed in the Constitution 20 years of doing that. And that was the only thing in the Constitution that couldn't be amended. They made sure they got enough of us workers to come over here as property to build this damn country. But they didn't give us any rights. We couldn't own our own children. And we had nothing to do with ownership of what we helped make. That alone, and, uh, along with all the other laws that have been made in the last 180 years, tell me what they think of me. Right. So before we even go to the original, we can just go back 200 years I'm and I know you, who I am. I'm going to show you that last 200 years in one verse. Give me through the line 28, 48 again. I'm going to yeah, show I'm you that devil. 200 years in this one verse. Exactly what you said in this one verse. Read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. Uh -huh. Which the Lord shall send against so thee. So God sent these people and allowed them to be able to make those amendments and those those legislations in the uh, laws. In the laws. Read Constitution. in the Constitution. And hunger and then thirst and then nakedness. So we will serve our enemies in hunger and then thirst and then nakedness. So for, for food, clothing, and water, we will serve them and a place to stay. Read. And, and want of all things. And want of all things. Anything you might think set your heart to desire, you got to go to them for it, including education, your I'm job, even if, even if you're an entrepreneur, you got to go to them well, for, the, for the paperwork. Well, I got a problem with that. In the New Testament, I know, I might be out here all day, but the New Testament says, you know his people. Huh? And I think it says in the New Testament, I don't remember exactly where, but it says, you will know his people. And they will not be beggars of bread, nor... We won't be the type of people that need another person's help if you want to define God's people. You're right. And we're not supposed to be that. But because we broke the commandments, he put us in that position. Right. So, and that's why I was going to Hebrews 12 and 6 to show you that whom he loved, he had chastised. Slavery was a chastisement because we didn't listen to God. 
You ain't absolutely right. We supposed to be on top. We ain't supposed to be breaking baking bread. We ain't supposed to need nobody help. They supposed to they're supposed to be serving us. But we gotta serve them because of our disobedience. Oh, go, okay. go back uh, finish that. Finish that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48 uh -huh. And in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things uh -huh. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck See that? The yokes of iron we... Until he have destroyed thee The Emancipation Proclamation happened in 1863 When we were so called free They just knew They knew they had broken our spirit by that time Abraham Lincoln didn't do us no, no favors. Abraham Lincoln freed, so-called freed the slaves so they can go work in the factories and make the United States more money because they were moving into an industrial age and moving away from the, the agricultural age. Preach it to the choir, my brother. Move to the next. Hey, there's, there's a lot of people out here that got to hear it too. Yeah, but they listening. I don't see them listening. They listening. They are far, but they listening. Let's go to Hebrews 12 and 6 real quick. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. So whom Chast the Lord loveth, he chastises. He punishes. Slavery was a punishment because he loved his people. He's trying to get us back. So from now, what do we have to do? John 14, 15. John 14, 15. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. Uh -huh. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But we all say we love Jesus. So what are the commandments we got to keep? Go to Romans 13. We're going to stay in the New Testament. Romans 13. Give me verse 8. Verse 8 and 9. There's really only one commandment now, right? Let, let's see. Because the book of Romans was after Christ died on the cross. I'm talking about in the New Testament. Right. There's 10 commandments. It, there's, there's two great commandments, but on those two great commandments hang all of the law. So he said, love love God with all your heart and soul and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That, to me, that's Do, pretty much the, Those are the two commandments. You can say they're like, pretty much like one, because if you love God, you're going to love your neighbor, right? right. But how do you do that? But deeds and not We're going to show you Romans 13 and 8. Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. Oh no man anything but to love one another. Uh -huh. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Read. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, uh -huh. thou shalt not kill, uh -huh. thou shalt not steal, uh -huh. thou shalt not bear false witness, right. thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this same, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See that? So that's how we do that, by actually keeping the commandments. Oh, sir, by doing it. You got to actually apply it to your life. I'm with you on that. Okay. You say I love you, if I never speak to you, I watch you starve, I don't love you. Right. But it's more than that. Right. It's more than that. You got to actually keep the commandments. First you John 5. You have to do it. First John 5 and start at verse 2. I'm with you. The book of 1st John chapter 5 and verse Where 2. Is the By this, we you know mean? that we you love got the fire. You got the fire? Yeah. All in there. Uh, yeah, it's all in there. Call the number on the back of the flyer because we actually in transition. When you want to come uh, meet with us, call the number. We'll give you the address where we're meeting at. We're in transition right now. Well, I'm trying to build it. I stopped for about three different reasons. One, most churches today that have people that look like us, they got more women in them. Right. And I got nothing against beautiful women, ugly women. My mama wasn't the best looking woman, but I love her. But most churches today that I've seen are dying. They have more funerals than they have weddings and baptisms. But they got more women in them leading them than us. We're not doing what we're supposed to do to show our butts up and lead so that they can help be beside us and lead and work together with us. Because we ain't that. That's one. Two is, and I like y'all out here, y'all taking your time to serve you doing. That's love. A lot of people think they can go into church for one hour, maybe three hours a week, compartmentalize their life, then go back out and not live what they can learn. So I admire you brothers for actually coming out here and spreading what you believe is, your, is the truth. And it is the truth. 
Thirdly, I just like to see brothers doing something positive. And I appreciate it. So I just want to stop by and say that. I'm going to show you one thing. Give me Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30 and 20. This is yeah. the importance of what you just said. Isaiah 30 and 20. I don't think y'all want me. Hey, you no, know, no, here's why. My aunt once told me I'm always looking for something that's perfect. And she said, if you ever find something perfect, leave it alone because your ass ain't perfect. The minute you get in it, it won't be perfect anymore. I'm gonna I show know you what she was saying. I'm going to show you something about that too. Read that. But Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity uh -huh. and the water of affliction. The bread of adversity, the water of affliction, we dirt broke and messed up. I'm just read. Yet shall not teach us be removed into a corner anymore but thine eyes shall see thy teachers so you shall see your teachers in these last days when we at our lowest this is when you're gonna see your teachers that's why you started to see brothers come out on the corners and teach the word of God in a way that you ain't really seen it being taught before because yeah, you know, you had you had the Muslims stand up in the 60s, right. but they weren't coming out of the Bible. Right. You might have had some brothers here and there go out and evangelize on the streets, but again, they weren't living the word. So they weren't being the, the, the example. But I'm going to show you something. You talked about Kirk. Give me Matthew 5 and 48. I'm going to show you what Christ said about Kirk. No, nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here's what I meant. Before you read that, here's what I meant. To me, perfect means complete. Don't need anything. Don't stand alone. That doesn't mean it doesn't have any faults. You can be a perfect man by being what God intended you to be. But that don't mean you're going to do everything 100% right. So, maybe, maybe I'm, I got the wrong concept of perfect. But perfect means I don't need you to pay my rent. I don't need you to feed me. I can stand alone and do what I need to do and make my choices with my mate. To me, that's what perfect means. That, that's a man being a man, and that's what you're supposed to do. You're right. supposed to take care of your responsibilities. Right. Watch this, though. Me okay. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So, Jesus Christ. Perfect. Jesus Christ would not give us that commandment to be perfect if we couldn't be perfect. Right. So let's see what makes us perfect. Right. Psalms 19 and 7. Right. Okay. Give me my definition. So far we agree with it. Yeah. Psalms 19 and yeah. 7. Jesus wasn't totally perfect either. No, Jesus was. I disagree. What makes you say that? Jesus being who he was. He was the son of the, he was the son yeah. of our father. Uh -huh. He knew what he was sent here to do. Uh -huh. He knew it, correct? Yeah. When it was time for him to do it, Father, take this away from me. Take this cup back. Let it not be. Hold, if I give you your mission, and you knew what you were built for, you knew what you were sent for, and when it's time for you to do it, you question it, that is not perfect. I'm going to tell you what that is. What That's is not that? him not being perfect. What is it? That's him being in his flesh, and the flesh took over for a moment. Right. But Jesus Christ shook that immediately. Yeah, but he that moment, that, that moment he carried out My he point is, that moment he let flesh, flesh take over, that was not the perfect point of Jesus. So we all, we all do that. I'm going to show you. We all know we're supposed to take care of our children. Here's what I'm trying to say. The book of, was, I'm, I'm going to let you okay, speak. Let me do this. Go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Okay. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So the laws of the Lord are perfect, converting the soul. It can make a simple man wise. Right. It can make an unperfect man perfect. Right. Now, I'm going to ask you this. Did right. Jesus Christ commit sin? Yes. What sin? When he was a child, um, questioning his father when he was a, when he was a, when 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 he did the, what he did the, the question of his father is that first Peter or second Peter? Those are the two I can think of right off my mind. First Peter two twenty. And anybody that was born into flesh that gives into flesh because he gave into his flesh a couple of times. That's imperfect. That's part of being sinful. the Bible says. Okay. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Uh -huh. For even hereunto were ye called. Okay. Because Christ also suffered for us. So Christ suffered me. Leaving us 
an example that you shall follow his step who did no sin. Wait, read that part again. Who did no sin. So we talking about Jesus Christ and he did what? Who did no sin. So the Bible said he did no sin. So that means Jesus was perfect said, because he kept the law. I'm sorry, what, what, what text you found? Read, it, read the text again. Oh, no, what text? What, what, what book? This is a book of uh, first, first Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Peter was number two to Christ. Peter yeah, walked with Christ. He knew Christ Peter, better than right? all of us. I know who Peter was. The point I'm trying to make is how to put this. My understanding of the Bible is imperfect. But he gave me a brain and I use it. Every word in that Bible is true. But not every word that we understand in the context of that particular it takes a lot of understanding to understand that thing. So you got parts of the Bible that do contradict each other. If, if, hold on, let me finish. If you don't have the proper understanding and context. For example, the Bible said about a rich man going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And there was once a rich man that wanted to say, How, what can I do to get into heaven? And God told him, leave everything and follow me. God went away sad because he knew he couldn't do that. Where there was another story where there was a, a widow woman that gave all she had, which in today's money might have been less than a penny or a penny. And she gave all she had. She was more able to get into heaven than he was because she was willing to follow God's word. That's the basic, the three basic things I, I looked at in the Bible for tennis. Because that rich man could have changed his mind and, and came back. Alright? That may not have been written, he may have done it. But that ain't the point. The point is, we are more subject to this than the image of God. But to me, the image of God is not eyes, hands, feet, legs, stuff you can touch. It's spirit. It's mercy. It's love. It's understanding. It's things I can't even comprehend. He made us in his image. That's, that's, hold on, I'm almost there. Those three tenets in one, the Bible is meant for me personally, for my understanding, and not to tell you how to live. I'm supposed to look at that and say, this is my instruction. And I live it, and you're supposed to see if I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. And if you don't, no big deal. The other one is, is basically an instruction on how to do it. I'm going to show you a couple things. What? Give me John 4 and 22. I'm almost finished. <laughs> if you do those three tenets, and I'm getting to why I think the Bible contradicts itself, you can go into the early testament, and he can wipe out a whole nation of people. Can, can, he could commit genocide, but we can't do that. We can't do everything God does, but we are made in his image and we're supposed to do like he does. And that to me, those type of things are contradictions. If I'm supposed to uh, aspire to be what he is, I'm supposed to aspire to do what he did. But I can't get mad and wipe out a whole bad race of bad people when they're bad or not. That would be wrong of me to do because I'm not on his level. He's God, I'm here away down here. That's why I think the Bible contradicts itself because of lack of my understanding. Questions? Read that. John chapter 4, verse 22. Okay. He worship, he know not what. We yeah. know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Now drop down to verse 24. You, know, you don't know what to worship this year. Verse 24. Verse 24. God is a spirit. Uh -huh. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So give me truth. Give me truth. Psalms 119 and 142. So I'm going to show you what truth is though. We, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you basically tell me what I told you. Not exactly. Not exactly. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Yeah. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law 
is the truth. So the laws of God is the truth. We must worship him by keeping the laws of God. So we gotta do what he says. If he says thou shalt not kill, guess what? Thou shalt not kill. But I'm gonna show you about that too. Go to Ecclesiastes 3. I'm gonna show you about that too. Because God also said there's a time for everything. Right. Time to live, time to die, time to put up. Right. Don't put you. What, what am I missing? You're talking about contradictions. I'm showing you there is no contradiction. No, there's no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here's what I'm saying. God is no contradiction. His word is no contradiction. I can show you. Here's what I'm saying. God put an elephant here. Uh -huh. He told you to go stand in the front. He told me to go stand in the back. Right. We've never seen this thing before. And he said, describe to me what you see. Now I'm in the back, the elephant may have diarrhea. And tail comes up, and I get sprayed with a bunch of brown stuff. I ain't happy. You in the front, this tail or thing comes up, and you get sprayed with nice cool water on a warm day. We're looking at the same thing. We both have different views of the same thing. An elephant is an elephant. But I'm having bad experiences with it. You're having great experience with it. That's the contradiction I'm talking about. God's word is truth. Elephant is an elephant. But how we perceive it and where we are is how most of us respond to this. When I'm hungry, I gotta eat. When I'm lonely, I need somebody to talk to. When I'm cold, I'll put on a jacket. We respond to our feelings. That's fact. In this world, we can't live off of just spirit. Hold on, I'm almost finished. My point I'm trying to make is, God's work is true, and it stands, it stands perfectly alone. Our weakness is understanding it and applying it. That's where the contradiction comes. God's word is no contradiction. It's like the law is the law. If he speeds, he's supposed to get a ticket. But not all of us get tickets. That's a contradiction. That's not a contradiction. That's disobedience. And disobedience is what got us here. Disobedience is what got us here. Wrong word. I use that as a contradiction. That's, and I said the Bible contradicts itself. I, I, I didn't. And that's my point. Words don't always do to get me and you to be here. We all don't. We all can look at all the facts you've given me. And you've given me nothing but facts in the words. But what I do with it, I could be the devil and I could go out there and do something bad with something good. Well, yes, the devil lies to us every day. He yeah, knows he that better than you and I. Here's the thing. Yes. We're commanded to come out here and do this. What do you Amen. hear or what do you forbear? Amen. So whatever you do with it, your blood is off our hands. Right. But guess what? We're going to give you the dust of the Lord. You don't want to. You don't want to be just that Mikael. But Mikael will tell you to go kill every white man out here, probably. Okay. I won't tell you that, but I know better than that. Yeah. But I'm saying that's that's the type of people we deal with. I'm gonna tell you to keep the commandments. All right. Nation is men leading by example. Nation 